So, welcome to a new episode of Weird Shit. Um, today we're going to build a very simple scene with modifiers uh, just to show you some of the new stuff that happened since Blender 2.8 released. Um, I'm using Blender 2.82. Uh, it's a beta right now, um, but for the most part you can do this in 2.8 and 2.81. Don't worry about it. If there's anything different, I'll let you know um, what's different and why you can find it in 2.82. So without further ado, let's actually get started and have some fun. So I'm gonna build a very, very simple scene, um, but I'm gonna build it with modifiers to show you how quick uh, you can build something up and to show you a new feature that's been added to some of them. So uh, we're gonna build a fairly basic uh, archfiz scene, just corridor with some pillars and stuff, and that's it. So I'm gonna build a ground plane. And then I'm gonna build a wall, which I'm going to make, let's see. Uh, oh, 90, there we go. And you'll see the shape up in just a second. This is just to show you what went before. So let's make this three meters high and then grab this as well. Now you'll see me holding down control um, to snap on the, uh, on the increments up here. That way you don't have to do it manually. And I'm just working on uh, full increments. It makes it a little bit easier. Bring it in one and there we go. So that's one side of the wall and the other side I'd like to make pillars. Um, there we go. Again, doing the same thing, just grabbing it, switching between modes with one, two, and three very easily. This is a great improvement, I think, over um, 2.7. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done a weird shit episode, so I'm trying to remember how things were with 2.7, but honestly, <clears throat> it's been quite some time since I've used it. So, um, and let's set this up so that we have our outer edge over here and our inner edge somewhere. Actually, like, uh, we can make this a little less wide. And again, holding down shift and control, you can get smaller increments. So maybe something like this, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Now we know this is about the same. So our uh, top here is gonna be two meters wide and our bottom is four meters wide. And all we need to do is then create the roof. And again, this is just set up <clears throat> You'll be able to download the file. I'll put the put it in the description so you can take a look at how it was constructed for yourself. So normally, let's have a look at our face orientations over here. There we go. Everything's pointing inward. And the last thing we need to do is throw in a camera here. And let's render this for Instagram, because why not? Something like this maybe. Yeah, we can always uh, set that up a little bit more later. That's fine. Let's give everything some names. Uh, mesh dot pillars. Is this the floor? Yes. Uh, and let's call this roof. <clears throat> Even though it's not really roof, it's a ceiling. We go. It's a little bit all caps, why not? There we go. And now we've got everything set up the way we want. So this is just some basic setup. The only thing I'm gonna do here is actually remove the top and bottom because I do not need those. <clears throat> no, wrong one. Uh, only the faces, there we go. And that's it. Now I'm gonna turn off the face orientation for now because we don't really need it and we're ready to start building up this scene. <clears throat> now, I just wanna make a corridor out of this. So I'm gonna use an array modifier to build up the scene. So let's see, um, there we go. And I'm gonna use a constant offset. How many pillars do we want? Maybe four, maybe five. Let's bring this in just a little bit so it matches. There we go. And uh, one other thing I'm gonna do as well 
is grab these two edges here. So the two innermost edges and control E, go to edge bevel weight and set this to one. There we go. And that's it. Now, um, I wanna make this a fairly long corridor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an array, set the constant offset to four, because I know this is four units because I've created it that way. And let's do eight total, so it's fairly long. And we're gonna do the same here. Set it to four and set this, oops, set this to eight once again. <clears throat> and again, we can do the same here, add a second one. Set this to not four, uh, not eight, but four, and this one goes to eight. The only thing I wanna do now though, is I wanna alternate this after I do the same thing. Oh, no, for the top. I'll set this to eight, there we go. <clears throat> but I wanna alternate between the pillars and the wall because it makes for a more interesting and dynamic image. Because right, right now if we go in, sure it's, it's nice, but it's all from one side. So another thing you could do is if we add in an empty here, there we go. And we scale this empty by minus one. Then if we add an object offset to this one, grab the empty and let's call it control mirror. And we do the same thing for the wall. And now we've actually created an offset really quickly and we get an image that's a little bit more dynamic and interesting. So this is a very, very quick way of setting this up. <clears throat> and one last thing I'd like to do here is, let's see, actually I'm gonna grab this one, duplicate it. Um, I'm gonna call this wall back because it's gonna be a back wall. I'm gonna zero out this on the X axis. Rotate at 90 degrees. There we go. Just align it and move it back. And again, because I've done this all on um, on the units, it's really easy to hold down control and just very quickly get everything sorted out. And now we've got a back wall as well we can use. And that's our scene pretty much set up. So let's get into shading. And again, this is just so we can build something really quickly. The only thing that's left to do actually that I forgot about is to add a bevel, but we're gonna add this bevel to the top um, because we want the calculation for the bevel to be done first and then move it on to everything else. But we're gonna use the bevel weight because we set it up that way. And this way, if we don't use the weight, what you'll see, um, where are we? I set this back to none. I actually have a gap between the wall. And if I set, use the weight, then we don't have a gap between the wall. And let's get a bevel going here that's not too big, just a little bit, just to round off these edges a little bit. There we go, and set this to more segments. I'm gonna set this to shade smooth, and you'll see the normals are a little weird. Uh, and if we set this to auto smooth, then what we can do is enable this harden normals option. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. It's called harden normals. What that's, what that's going to do is it's going to grab the flat parts of your mesh and keep them flat. Um, but for it to work, you have to smooth shade your mesh and set this to auto smooth as well down here. So it's quite important. But now we have pillars and they have a little bit of an edge to them, which is nice because they'll catch the light and it just gives that little bit of extra. Now for the shading part, let's go into our material preview and see if we can have some fun here now. So right now everything is just dark. I'm going to save my scene and you'll see I've done a version of this already just to test it out. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to give each one of these materials and then there's another option uh, here in the array with the UV offsets that we can use to actually create some randomness within all of the different objects. So I'm going to start with this wall and actually make sure that my UVs are set up correctly. So let's see what happens when we throw in a texture here. Hit new. And then using uh, the Node Wrangler add-on, enable it if you don't, because it's awesome. You control Shift T. What you can do is if we go into textures here, let's grab this first one. I think that's the one I want. Yeah, let's grab these four. There we go. And we're gonna have to use a little bit of UV offsetting, but it should be okay. There we go. You just wanna match it with the actual 
shape of the mesh. There we go. Look good enough. It's not perfect, but you won't see it from this angle, so that's great. So here you'll see, for example, now we've got all that stuff going. And let's have some fun with this and actually animate this camera so we can fly through it a little bit. Um, this is animated on the Y axis. Let's see, maybe four meters is fine. So I have a little bit of slow movement. Now if we set this up, you'll see the wall coming into view every single time. But because of the way we've set up the pillars, we don't actually have any issues with um, seeing the world outside and we can light this fairly easily and have some fun with it as well. Now, um, one thing I am going to do is just set up the passport two here, and that way we can uh, just focus on whatever's in the camera view. Now, next thing I'm going to do is these pillars, and we're going to have to unwrap these. But we can just do it like this. Select everything by hitting A, and I'm going to hit Shift F10 twice to get into UV mode. Hit U and set cube projection. So now we've just projected from all four sides. And the only other thing we want to do is because we want the texture to kind of follow the pillars is we're going to grab not all of them, but just this one. No, won't do it. Interesting. see let's do it in this view then um, all we need to do is select this side scale it on the x-axis here and uh, again it's just s x zero and that way we've scaled them down nicely uh, let's grab the other side here do the same thing actually one by one and I'm sure there's add-ons and things for this but I'm just going to show you how to do it manually it's easier that way and now if we grab everything, if we hit the uh, the V key, so I'm gonna switch over to edges over here. It's like this edge, hit the V key. Now you can see, um, I wanna stitch this together. So it's gonna grab the other part of the UV and try and stitch together, but this doesn't seem to work properly. Because of the Q projection, some of our polygons, uh, our UVs are actually flipped 180 degrees. So I'm gonna do the same thing, uh, select all of them by just selecting one vertex and then hitting Control L to get the linked ones, and then scaling it to minus one on the x-axis. And now you'll see if we select this, we'll actually get the right ones. Again, hit V, and we'll probably have to do the same thing for this last one. So again, if we get, grab this, hit V, and now we've got a nice little thing here, and we could pack the islands. There we go. And now we've got a straightened out UV from this object, which will make everything look a little bit better. We're gonna give this material as well. And again, hitting Control Shift T. Let's grab this one over here. <clears throat> Let's see, that's number 23, there we go. And I might actually con disconnect the displacement in some of these because it might be a little bit over the top because we've already got normals in there. So there are normal map in there, so that's fine. Again, and do the same thing for the roof. Control Shift T and I think it's this one. There we go. Again, disconnect the displacement. We can leave it in there. If you're gonna render it with cycles, you can mess with it. And for this one, this is a little big and rough. I wanna scale this down just a little bit. And let's see what our UVs look like. Let's see if they're actually in the correct. No, so they, <clears throat> I need to redo them here real quick because they're squishing the texture. So here, I'm just gonna go into top view and project from bounds, but if I turn off correct aspect, uh, sorry, scale to bounds rather, now we get a normal one here and then we can hit pack again. Uh, pack islands, Never mind, these are the ones here, they're from some add on I've got enabled, I don't know which one exactly. Um, and I'm gonna scale these up just a touch and now we've got some stuff going on here. Do the same thing down here. New material, 
Control Shift T, and I'm gonna grab, let's see, is it this one? No, it's this one. So this is number two. There we go. Uh, these textures, by the way, are all grabbed from textures.1. It's a website where you can grab uh, public domain textures you can use for anything. Now, I used this texture earlier, so I'm going to cheat real quick um, to get this to align with the side, but it's just basically uh, trying to get the location right. So it's 0 0.084, I believe. Yes, and this one was 0 0.038. There we go. So now I've just aligned this with the edge. And one important thing to note is that this texture, if I turn off the array real quick, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's ten tiles by ten tiles. So let's actually start with uh, what this tutorial is supposed to be about now. And this is the U and V offset in the array. So right now you can see all these pillows are exactly the same. But the moment we start messing with the UV offset, we can actually get different ones. Now, because I've used an array twice on this, I'm going to have to set this up in the other one as well. And now you'll see that each pillar actually has its unique little offset and they're not all the same anymore. So this is a really fun way and this has been added to multiple different modifiers, including the mirror modifier as well. Um, this is a great way to set up a scene like this because you don't have to do a lot of the work. You can just offset everything, same here. We can offset it here a little bit and offset it here a little bit. And now there's still gonna be some repetition, but for the top here, which is gonna be fairly dark, it's not the biggest issue ever. But even for the side here, um, we can mess with it and you'll see, uh, because this is a three by six, if we set this to 0 0.333 or thereabouts, sometimes you just have to finagle it manually a little bit and then offset it here as well, you actually get different offsets for different UVs. So there we go. And now if we move through and we look at it, then we won't always have the same thing. And actually this one, if we do it slightly differently, we don't want it to be on a half because then they'll flip over and they'll be the same on the same sides. Now you'll see the offset is slightly different and actually works quite nicely. Now something we'll do to the floor as well um, which you could do to the wall because they're tiles. Uh, we're gonna use this in conjunction with uh, messing with our UVs. And there's a really fun way to do this and I'll show you in just a second. First thing I'm gonna do is offset this. And again, let's see how we can offset this here to make sure that it looks okay. There we go. And offset this a little bit as well. Something like this maybe. There we go. And now it's not exactly the same, but there's still a fair amount of repetition to be found after a little while. Like we can still see this and this. And I'd like to break this up a little bit more even. So another thing we can do is if we grab a brick texture and pipe this into the UV vectors, let's move this over a little bit, give ourselves some space. Then what we need to do is we create a uh, we need to create a pattern of ten by ten so we can match the tiles. So let's see what we can do. Here we go and turn off the offset and the mortar size. And from what that looks, it actually looks okay. So if we set the brick width to one, then you can actually use a scale of ten, and now you'll know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will actually match the tiles. So. What's so great about this then? Well, there's another um, noodle little thing, a uh, new little thing in Blender 2.8 and higher called a map range function. I believe it was uh, in 2.81 that they introduced it and they've added more in 2.82 now as well, which is great because all this does is it allows you to put something in and just remap it from whatever you want to whatever you want. So I'm gonna set this from black to white because I know my values are gonna be from zero to one now. And um, if I wrap this to like 0.25, for example, you'll see now all the colors are going to go from black to 25% gray. Now, the cool thing is um, because we have 100 tiles, I could set this to 100. And now each one of these tiles is actually going to be from either uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 100. So if I set this to 1, and uh, 
Sure, this might not make a lot of sense. And let me just turn off the bloom really quick here so we can actually see what's going on. You'll see um, Eevee's having a hard time showing you this because they're such high values. But it doesn't really matter, it's fine. Um, and a little added extra bonus, if we set this to step linear in um, 2.82, now we can say how many steps there are in there. So let's say, I'm gonna bring this back down to 16 and 16. Now we've got different values going from one to 16 uh, in between all these different tiles. Now what does that mean exactly? Well, I'll show you real quick. If I had a vector math in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this brick texture to the UV vector of this tiling texture. And now we'll have to do some tweaking, but what you can see, let's say if I do 10 steps, if I were to disable this, now what this is gonna do is for each one of those tiles of that brick, and it's gonna push the UVs a little bit. And because we're doing this with UVs, it actually gets propagated to the array and it breaks it up even more. So we could mess with the amount of steps until we get a nice result. And this is all visual. You can try all of this yourself. So what happens if we do 12 steps or 12.5 maybe? There we go. Breaks it up just a little bit more. And together with this, you get a way more varied texture and you didn't have to do a lot of the work and you don't have to blend multiple textures and it's not a major pain in the butt to make it all work. It works just fine. If you get up really close, you might see a little bit of an edge there, but it's no big deal. And the repetition will be a lot less visible, especially from our camera view now. It looks like we have a bit more going on here. Now I say that and there's some stuff here, so it's really down to messing with the steps to see uh, whether you need to overdo it or not. I think 10 steps here is a pretty good pretty good one. And you could do this with multiple different things. Um, you could do it with different channels, you could do it with the rotation as well. Uh, but we're gonna keep it simple and keep it to the location now for now. So that's cool. Um, and just as a proof of concept, let's see if we can get this right on the other tiles here as well, because we know we've got one, two, three, four, five, six across and three down. So we'll repeat the same thing just to give you an idea. And this is great, as I said, in conjunction with these new tools and all of these simple little things, they might seem sort of unusable at first, but a lot of them are actually quite nice and quite easy to use. So I think we might have to adjust our mapping here as well. Let's see if this makes it work. It looks a little bit better, yeah, sure. Let's move the mapping over. And again, uh, we need to figure out our scale. So I'm gonna set the scale to six and roll back to one. So now I've got six here and if I set this to two, decrease the offset. And now we're almost there, but it looks like we're gonna have to do a little bit more work to get this to match. There we go. If I turn off the mortar, now this should sort of match our, uh, our tiles. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because I wanna move on and finish the scene. But uh, let's see here, let's grab this again. And I'll show you visually now what it does. If we just pipe this in immediately and have this go from zero to one, now you'll get these weird sort of distortions, but let's see, uh, again, we can use this map range. Let's set it to three. And the step linear really is where all the magic happens. There we go. So you can see you can even create more complex effects if you wanted to just by having it uh, set up a different way. But we just want the bricks to be in a different order. Let's see if this helps. Nope. Oh, we'll need to mess with it a little bit more. So let's see what does four and a half steps do. I think this, yeah, there we go. So now they're moved around a little bit more. And this again propagates down to all of the different stuff, um, all the different panels because we've used these UVs to offset them. So now you've got even more randomness in this scene. And really all we need to do now to finish it is if we set this to rendered, tweak the shaders a little bit and then we should be pretty much done. All right, so. Ah, 
I know what's going on here. Our preview is still set up. There we go. Here and here. So now we have no lights in the scene, which is exactly what I want. And all we we're going to do is we're going to add in a sunlight, rotate it on the y axis a little bit so we get that light falling in. Maybe rotate it on the z axis a bit more on the y. There we go. Got nice sunlight falling in. And we can overdo this a little bit. Maybe set it to 10 to start with. And add a sky to this as well. And the easiest way to set up the sky correctly is just to go into top view and then kind of point it from where the sun is coming from. And this isn't perfect, but it works well enough. For example, set this to 7.5. It's just still a little bit on the dark side, so we can set this higher maybe to 15. And we're gonna blast our sun in there to get really nice, strong lighting. There we go. The only thing we need to do now is to set this texture in the back see did i grab the right one i'm looking for the, <clears throat> excuse me i'm looking for the tiles should have named my textures that would have been better it's the floor these are tiles there we go and now it's just a case of come on there we go give it a sec here it's having a hard time and uh, now it's just a case of tweaking everything a little bit. So I'm going to take down the displacement. So it's fairly minimal and throw in a hue saturation node here. Bring the saturation down so it's a bit more gray. So it aligns a bit more with everything else. Same with this back wall and the side wall. I'm going to just throw in a hue and saturation. Bring the value down maybe a bit more. It's quite bright and now it fits a little bit better with everything else. We can bring this one down as well, just to give it a little bit more contrast. There we go. That actually looks quite nice. So that's how you set up a really quick scene. Let's throw some depth of field in here. Um, where are we? Depth of field. And let's focus it about this far. There we go. And if we want to, we could even go completely crazy. So that's a bit much. Uh, and now if we render this out. Give it a sec here. And you can see now there's very little repetition visible. Um, we've got a nice little scene we can throw other stuff into. And this took us 28 minutes to set up, so that's not too bad. Um, yeah. This looks good. I like it. That's pretty much it, I guess. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this first episode. Coming back. Um, I'm gonna do more stuff in the future, obviously, but uh, yeah, it's good to be to be back doing these, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.